A couple of years ago, when I bought my first full-frame mirrorless camera, I decided to buy it with a kit lens, the 24105 f4 zoom lens. At that time, it was pretty convenient for me to buy the camera with the zoom lens as a kit, because I was considering the speed of work for clients' jobs. And I don't regret at all that purchase that I did, but at that time I was totally unaware of what I could have adapted to my beautiful mirrorless camera. And one day on set, while talking with my friend and colleague Salvatore, I was wondering what I could have buy as a good 50mm prime that was also fast for my Lumix S1. So after I asked this question to my friend, even without thinking about it, he told me right away by the Contax Zeiss 50mm f1.4. And he was so right. The first time I hold that lens and I start to use it with my camera, I instantly realized three major quality of that lens. The amazing build quality, that thing was made to last forever. All made out of metal and glass. The mechanical precision was fantastic and it was like a really joy to use that lens already from the first moment. Even if I was a total noob about manual focusing, it didn't matter. It was just a pure pleasure to work with that lens. The second great quality of that lens was how it was rendering the images. They were so organic and creamy. It was really something that I never saw in any lens before. And the third quality was the value for money. At that time, I have bought that lens for around 200 euros and it was in excellent shape. And with all the honesty, I felt kind of stupid that I dropped 1000 euros for a modern lens that is, uh, yes, it is beautiful, but that one was uh, way more beautiful. And after this realization of the lens, I decided that I will never buy a modern prime lens anymore. So then I started to build my set of contacts Zeiss. I bought the gimbal friendly version, the 28, 35 and 85 f2.8 and the 50mm f1.4. So they were all extremely small and compact and I could have swapped those lenses in the gimbal without the need of balancing the gimbal again because they were sharing pretty much the same size and weight. It was all fantastic and beautiful. But then I decided to sell my contacts Zeiss. That obviously I regretted after just 30 seconds after I dropped the lens in the hands of the guy that bought them from me. So after that moment of uh, crisis and panic, I went right away to eBay and I bought another Zeiss Planner 50mm f1.4. And so after this long introduction, in today's video I wanna talk about this beautiful and fantastic Zeiss Planner 50mm f1.4. The major difference that I saw while jumping from the old Contact Zeiss and the Zeiss Classic were pretty clear to me. This lens has 9 aperture blades instead of 6, so the bokeh is gonna be smoother and rounder if you stop down the aperture blades. The build construction is also better because I don't see any dust inside the lens, so it looks like it's kind of good sealed against dust. This lens has a 58mm from diameter instead of a 55 from the contact size, so this lens has a slightly less vignetting. And talking about the optical rendering of the lens, this lens is more contrasty, it has more color saturation, and it tends to produce a little bit more chromatic aberrations because this lens is also sharper than the Contax Zeiss version. I absolutely love this modern version of the Zeiss Planner 50mm f1.4, but uh, in my opinion it's not for everyone, because this lens has a pretty strong character. And the character I'm talking about is something you're gonna see if you keep the lens wide open at f1.4 up to f2.8. So this lens is gonna be extremely dreamy if you keep the aperture wide open at f1.4, it's gonna be soft but still with good rendering of the images at f2 and it's gonna be extremely sharp in the center from f2.8 and it's gonna be extremely sharp corner to corner at f5.6. And this magical characteristic of being soft wide open but pretty sharp from f2.8 open up the world to the famous micro contrast. But the things that I love the most about this lens is the dreamy look at f1.4. I know that out there online there are many 
reviews that are saying that this lens is unusable at f1.4 but after messing up with this lens for three years i'm pretty confident to say that this lens is freaking beautiful if you know how to use it because the cool thing of this lens is that if you use it wide open at f1.4 you can play both with the bokeh at the closest distance of the focus plane but also with a really incredible 3d rendering similar to the medium format look if you place the subject you want to focus on above 2.5 meters it sounds too simple but like if you play with this lens from 0.7 to 2 meters wide open at f 1.4 you're probably not gonna get good results with this lens but once you start to focus your subjects above 2.5 meters and between 0.7 and 0.45 meters that is the minimum focus distance this lens is gonna surprise you with incredible rendering of the images but keep in mind that if you're gonna use this lens wide open at f 1.4 you have to expect to see some glow around the focus plane so don't expect extreme sharp and clean images like you would with the sigma 50 mm f 1.4 because with this lens is not the case. Another characteristic that you may like or not about this lens is the barrel distortion because with this lens is kind of uh, pronounced. So if I compare this with the Leica R 50mm f2 that I forgot to take, it's there. All the lineup of Leica R lenses are well corrected talking about distortion. But this is not that bad, it's actually pretty nice if you think about uh, how it's gonna blur the background because there's gonna be let's say more distortion and then the what's going on on the side is gonna be more blurry compared to a normal and flat lens so with the Zeiss Classic in general you have to be careful when you plan to pan your camera or if you place your subjects on the extreme sides of the framing talking about flares this lens produces unique flares that I absolutely love I love them at f1.4, f2, f4, f8, f11. It has really unique uh, flares that I love. Obviously, if you stop down the lens to f2.8, the flares are gonna be drastically reduced. And if you use it uh, wide open at f1.4 or f2, it's gonna be a gigantic orange and warm uh, orb floating around your frame. And when you stop down the lens, you're gonna see a nice and beautiful rainbow flare. The quality of the bokeh of this lens is kind of funky and busy. If you keep it wide open at f1.4, but also at f2, but it's gonna get extremely smooth if you stop down the lens from f2.8 and going on. But I have to say that I absolutely love the rendering of the bokeh balls at f1.4 it is uh, really unique and i really love this contrast of having a soft and not really defined subject in focus and a lot of uh, busyness and uh, harshness going around the frame it's a nice contrast that you may like or not i absolutely love it but i understand it's not for everyone but anyway if you are looking for a great 50 mm f1.4 that has a great double character that has a vintage vibe but is still sharp, contrasty and with good color saturation if you stop down the lens, I think this is a must have lens in your kit because it is uh, really versatile and it's uh, pretty unique in the rendering of the images. But anyway, if you are passionate about vintage lenses, if it's not today, it's gonna be tomorrow that you're gonna end up with this lens in your kit. I know it's gonna happen and I will probably see you in the next video I've made for you. Thank you for watching. Ciao.